Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's obviously a long time since I last posted anything but hopefully like this little short video about uh, Burns guitars will make up for some of that. Um, as always if you like what I'm doing please do uh, click the like button and subscribe as well and I'll try to do more frequent ones but to be honest it's very hard to get hold of unusual guitars nowadays. In fact it's hard to buy any guitars at reasonable price um, but I'll keep looking and hopefully I'll find some more interesting ones to talk about. So anyway, as I said, this is all about Burns and Burns may not be a familiar brand to people outside the UK or certainly people who are older than 30 years old because they're really sort of famous from the early 60s and I'm thinking of you know, the pop bands like The Shadows and even Jimmy Page had one in the early days. But they're not really something you see outside of England. And the reason they were successful in England was really because of price. The import duties on Fenders and Gibsons was way too high for the average player. So uh, they were turned to Burns. And Burns had these kind of Fender-like guitars um, that you could get more easily. So Jim Burns first started uh, making guitars in 1958 which uh, he had the Isaac Hayes short sale guitar. Uh, these were incredibly expensive, so only about 50 were made. And I say incredibly expensive, I think it was around 60 pounds, which in 1958 actually was a lot of money. Um, so th they went on for a little while, and then in 1961, uh, he came out with the Bison guitar. And that again was quite expensive, I think it was around 150 pounds. So again, out of the reach of most people, and again, only about 50 were made. So Jim Burns decided, well, I, I need to make something more affordable uh, so that uh, people can buy them. And that's when this guitar came about, and it is the short scale jazz guitar. And we say short scale, it is short scale. It's about 23 and a half inches, as opposed to the normal uh, Fender scale lengths, which are, I think, 24 and a half or 25 and a half, I can't remember now. Um, but certainly it's, it's, it's not um, one for shredding on because it actually, once you go higher up here, then it actually has, does get quite tough to bend strings. And I, I tried doing some songs earlier on it and I found that my puny fingers really couldn't handle it. Okay, down here though, so all the cowboy chords are quite fine. That aside, it's, it's not a sort of budget catalogue guitar. It's, um, it's actually intended for... You know, professional musicians, and be, but still be affordable. Um, so it's got a nice mahogany body. Um, the neck wood, I guess, is of unknown origin. Hopefully it's mahogany. It's quite hard to tell because it's a light colour. Pickups you'll probably recognise if you're a fan of Brian May because these are the same trisonic pickups that he used in his Red Special. Because it's two pickups on this one, we don't have the clever switching systems that Burns introduced later, which is called the Wild Dog uh, Electronics. This is actually just two-way, uh, sorry, three-way switching for the two pickups and a single volume and tone control. What's different about this one, as I mentioned in this or heading to the video, is it's a prototype. So this has been assembled without the tremolo arm, which you'd normally get, and just a fairly straightforward bridge on there. And the scratch plate doesn't extend up as far as it would do on, on the production guitars. It still has the back plate here uh, with all the patent numbers like you get on Burns guitars. And it still has the same tuners, which are obviously early 1960s vintage. So uh, sometimes go out of tune. So there you have it. It's uh, an interesting guitar for playing nice and low down here. I wouldn't recommend going higher up because it hurts. And uh, let's plug it in. Oh, just, just a bit more history on Burns because obviously it said Burns London here. In fact, in 1965, Jim Burns sold out to the Baldwin Company, who were the Baldwin Company actually trying to buy Fender as well at the same time. And it's a bit strange because you know Burns was actually doing quite well. There was no need to sell up, uh, but he did. And I think he sold for $380,000 which isn't that much when you consider that Fender in the same period sold for $13 million. So I think he sold himself short there. And in fact, he, Jim Byrne did try to come back later 
uh, in the 70s trying to set up guitar brands again but it was never quite as successful so there you have it uh, a Burns short scale jazz I'll plug it in now and see if I can get some decent sounds out of it see you next time Thank you.